QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, credit card, bank feed, add data. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our bank feeds test file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to take a look at the bank feeds related to the credit card data that we uploaded last time. So we're going to be going to the banking dropdown, bank feeds, and we're going to go to the bank feed center. We now have our institutions dropdown and per institution, we have our cards up top. It'll default to the checking account. We're going to be over here on the credit card. So I'm going to go to the second card, the credit card. I'm going to go to the unrecognized activities, the first month of operations. Therefore, everything is unrecognized at this point. Now the credit card is going to be much the same. It, it seems a little bit more difficult to think about the credit card because we always think in terms of cash. So it's easier for our minds, I think, to, to figure cash. But note if you're looking at the checking account information over here, it's actually a little bit more complex because you're going to have both deposits and payments going out on, on the checking account side. On the credit card side, basically everything's going to be a, a charge, meaning kind of like a payment. And then the only other side that you're, you're going to, well, they're going to call it a charge that you're going to be paying to somebody else. And then what they call the payment here is actually you paying off the credit card. So there's not going to be a lot of activity on the payment side of things. If it's a payment, it, it's either like a, a credit, meaning uh, you, you got charged back for a purchase that you made, which is a fairly rare transaction, or you're paying down the credit card debt. The reason the credit card can be a little bit more confusing is because oftentimes we think of cash. So in terms of the checking account, so when we think of buying something, or cash going out for a service or good that we purchased, we think of the assets going down and that's a little bit more natural to us than the credit card. Whereas when we buy something on the credit card, the liability is going up. So let's just consider that with regards to the financials. Let's go to open up the reports up top, company and financial. Let's take a look at the balance sheet standard. And we're just gonna be saying, or let's change the dates up in the customized reports from 010120 to 123120 and okay. Then let's open the profit and loss by going to reports up top, company and financial, profit and loss standard, changing the dates from 010120 to 123120. There's our P and L. Let's bounce back over to the balance sheet in the open windows. Now, when we make a payment from cash, if we paid like the telephone company with cash, then obviously the checking account would go down. The other side we would expect to be on the profit and loss in say telephone expense down here. So that's fairly straightforward. If we go to the credit card information, same kind of thing, except now instead of cash going down, a liability, which is going to be a credit card kind of liability account is going to go up. And then the other side would still be going to the credit card expense. And then we're going to be paying down, of course, the credit card at some point in time. As a, well, let's think about the cash. On the cash side of things, we're also going to have the deposits that are going to be taking place. Those being from customers, and we could have deposits from others as well uh, that will increase. On the credit card side of things, the only other thing that's going to happen is we're going to pay down the credit card. So the credit card is going to go down when we make a payment on the credit card, unless we get like a charge back, uh, like, a, like a charge that we had and they gave us our money back on the credit card or something like that. So it's actually a little bit easier in that way. Now note that when we think about the credit card, let's go back to the bank feeds. One thing to keep in mind is now we have two things with bank feeds on them. And we note that there's going to be a transaction that's going to be going from one to the other. So for example, uh, in the checking account here, we're going to be having to pay off the credit card from the checking account. Both sides of that transaction are driven by the bank feeds. So now the checking account is, we're recording the data basically in the checking account with the bank feeds. We're going to be recording the data on the credit card account, the liability account, basically with the bank feeds. So we're going to have to deal with how are we going to deal with that interbank feed account type of transaction. So let's, for example, on 6-8 here, we paid off uh, the 538.22 to the credit card on 6-8. And if I go to, to the credit card over here, uh, around around 6 8 uh we had the 537 22 i think that was the same one so notice it's on both sides is going to be the point so how are we going to deal with that that inner company or interbank fee type of transaction two accounts being hit that are using the bank feeds we'll talk about that in a future presentations uh right now we'll be adding uh the the basically the the uh, amounts that are the charges to to the credit card increasing the charge accounts so we'll do this relatively quickly because again the same process is going to be on the other side of uh, on the bank feeds pretty much the same kind of activity so here's a costco account 
let's let's assume that everything going to Costco is like supplies that we're purchasing for uh, the business. So note that it could be supplies. It could you might be purchasing inventory from Costco or something. Then it would increase inventory if you're tracking inventory, uh, or or if it was a personal expense, then you can record it to equity. I'm just going to record it to office or supplies at this point. So I'm going to then say uh, in the account, so the I'm going to say the payee, let's add a payee, same process, is going to be a vendor. And I'm just going to call it Costco, Costco, and we will add that. And I'll say, okay, I probably should copy the vendor and I'll put it here as well. And so I'm going to add that. And then we're going to say the other side, I'm going to put the supplies. So I'm just going to make a new account. And I'm going to call it an expense account. So we'll call it an expense account of supplies. And that's it. And I'll save that. And then if I wanted to take a look at it in more depth, I can add detail. And we could see the same kind of detail line here. And then if I want to make a rule for it, I'll make a rule in the same way that we've seen in the past. And I'm just going to say the rule is going to be a Costco, Costco rule. Now, now note, we might buy the same thing for Costco again and have different different items for it. So if you can use this number in some way to basically differentiate one purchase from another, maybe you purchase something from an online Costco versus a store Costco, and you have a differentiation between those two that'll show up on the bank statement, then you can differentiate the feed. Also note that you might buy a whole bunch of stuff from Costco. So you might say, hey, look, anything over a certain dollar amount I want you to have a different rule for because I want to check out if I need to do something different like with that such as capitalizing that item. So you might say have a rule that would be everything under a certain dollar amount that you want going there. So for example, I'm, I might have a description here and I say it's going to match. Let's say it contains just Costco in it. anything, anything from Costco, I'm going to put to the supplies account. And then I might say I might add another one, however, and say that it also has to meet my my amount limitation, meaning it's got to be less than $500. So if it's more than $500, I think I might be purchasing something that I might have to capitalize possibly. If it's less than $500, I'm going to assume it's supplies and it's just going to simply go to the Costco account. So I'm then going to say save and we'll apply that rule and we'll save this one out. So there we have it. And now it's pushed a lot of over into the recognized item for those Costco transactions. Let's go ahead and look at our lists drop down. Take a look at the chart of accounts where we have added the supplies account. So we added supplies during that process. If we go to the vendors drop down and look at the vendor center, I also added during that process the Costco as a new vendor. So we can track by vendor what we're paying to Costco. And then I'm going to close that back out. If we look at the financial statements, then we're going to say on the balance sheet, going to refresh it. We didn't have a decrease to cash now, but an increase in the credit card liability, which was set up when I added the credit card. So I got this set up. There's the $60 payment, double clicking on that. There it is. It's got the little thing saying it's it cleared the credit card. So we're kind of doing our credit card reconciliation as we go. And there's our credit card purchase that we have. Closing this back out. Closing uh, this back out, I'm going to go back to the bank feeds then. Now, I can go then to the recognized transactions. These are all recognized uh, with the same rule. So I'm going to go ahead and just add those at this time. I'm, it's all checked off already. I'm going to say, yeah, that looks good. Let's go ahead and add. I'm just going to add and confirm all of that. And so I'm going to say, yeah, put that into the statement. Okay, what happens then? Balance sheet. Now, we've, now we owe 1083 14 here and if I go to the profit and loss we've got the uh, supplies side of things there's the supply side of things and all those transactions have now been recorded type of account credit card type of activity so closing this back out back to the bank feeds we're going to then go to the uncategorized transactions now this is Molina I'm going to assume this is like a uh, health insurance for our employees let's say employee benefit type of account so I'm going to say all right new account i'm going to add a vendor i'm going to say this is going to be molina and this uh, i'm going to say it's a vendor and i'm going to call it uh, molina molina health uh, care 
insurance. All right, we'll say that's the one, copy that, put it there, and I'll say okay. And then I'm gonna say the account is gonna be, I'll just call it employee benefit, employee benefits. And I might, I might wanna add basically a, a sub account here. Maybe I wanna call this uh, health care employees. And then maybe put that under a sub account of employee benefits. Maybe I say, I wanna make that a sub account of another account here. And I'll call this one employee benefits in general. So this would be the parent account, sub account then the uh, healthcare. And then I can say, okay, check what that looks like on our lists chart of accounts. We're gonna scroll down. So now we've got employee benefits healthcare underneath it. So if I had other benefits that I wanna list under there, th uh, then I can list those items here as employee benefits. And then I'm gonna say, all right, let's add a rule there because all the, all the Molina ones are going to the same place. So I'm gonna say add details and let's put a rule in place. We're gonna set a rule. So it's gonna be uh, a rule down here, custom rule. And I'm gonna call it uh, Molina Healthcare. And that's good enough, I'll keep it at that. And I just want it to describe, just contain, if it just contains Molina Healthcare, that should be good enough. We want it to go into this account. I think that's it, save it. And then, and then uh, I'll save the transaction. Three more have been found. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and add those. So, well, let's check it first before I add them, probably a best practice. Let's make sure it does what we think it should. So if I go to the credit card, so now we got the credit card, there's Molina has been included there. The other side is going to the uh, profit and loss, profit and loss, and it's going under the employee benefits. We have the subgroup and there it is there. So that looks right. So I'm gonna go, let's go back to the bank feeds and just add the rest of these. We got them checked off. Let's go ahead and batch add them. Batch add, confirm, confirm that, Roger out. And then we're gonna go back to the balance sheet. And so now we've got double checking here. We've got the Molina activity added. And we're gonna close that back out, back to the P&L, profit and loss. And there's the activity on the expense side of things. So that looks good. So let's go back to the bank feed, see what else we have. We're gonna to go to the uncategorized items. So these are payments. I'm not dealing with those yet here. So this is a redemption. So this got paid back to us, it looks like from Costco. So this is the only kind of thing, see it's under the payment side, but we didn't make a payment, it was like the charge back because Costco messed something up or something and they charged us back, which was nice. So they, we were mad because they messed it up, but then they charged it back, so it's okay. But then if we're gonna add this one, we're gonna say this will, I'll take it to the same account, the supplies account, supplies. And we could set up a rule for that one as well and the, if the payee is going to be Costco, because this is this is going the other way. It's not it's not a charge. I mean, it's not increasing the liability. It's decreasing the liability. That's why it didn't get picked up by the rule. Now we could set up another rule saying, hey, if it comes from Costco and it's going the other way, then then make sure to uh, hit the same account. But I won't do it right now. I'll just I'll just add it one here. Shouldn't happen too often. Maybe we want to check them a little bit more closely when they do happen. And then we have insurance. So here's an insurance. Let, let's let's assume this is like liability insurance. So uh, I'm gonna say, or this progressive auto or liability. Let's go liability insurance. So I'm gonna say progressive vendor, and we'll say uh, we'll say this is going to progressive progressive. And so I'll copy that, copy, and then here, and I'm gonna say, okay. Now I already have an insurance here. Maybe I wanna make this like the parent account and then put the activity underneath it in another account. And notice up here I have also, this is kind of like an insurance possibly, but it's under an employee benefit. So maybe I wanna put like my other insurance, like liability and auto for the company insurance under like a subcategory of insurance. So let's add another account. I'm gonna say, let's add a new one. And I'm going to say this is going to be, uh, in, let's say, insurance. And then I'm going to call it auto. 
and I'm going to make it a sub account of the insurance account, insurance expense account that has already been set up. And then I'm going to say, uh, okay, let's set a rule for it. I'm going to go to the rule. I'm going to add details and go to the, the rules over here. Oh, I'm sorry, not match. I'm going to go to rule down here. And then this is going to be progressive. So it's a progressive rule. I want it just to have the description of contains. Just progressive is probably enough. And then everything else looks good. Let's say save that. Save that. Let's see what happens if I go back to the balance sheet and say OK. So now we double click here on the credit card. We should have uh, progressive there. Closing that back out. The other side, let's check that out one more time. We got double click on that. We've got the progressive uh, here. Okay. That was a chargeback. All right. So I'm going to close this back out and then I'm going to go to the profit and loss. Okay. And now we have the insurance. And this one was, was it's a negative because they're giving the money back here for the progressive it was overpaid or something. But, and then I have in, so I have the insurance expense. And then under that, we have the insurance auto and insurance other. Okay, so let's go back to the bank feeds. That looks good. And we're going to then say, and there's no other insurance activity, it looks like. So that was the only one. All right. So then what else do we have here? Any more payments? It doesn't look like, like we have any more uh, charges. So we had this, this progressive insurance as well. So I'm going to pick that one up. So I'm going to call this progressive and then this is going to be the account of insurance let's say insurance and then this will be uh insurance auto so i'm going to say let's add that and that was on the payment side so if i go back on over to the p and l we then have the the insurance for auto picking up those two amounts here so i'm going to close this back out and we're going to go back to the bank feeds then. So now we now we only have basically the payments. And these are the, going to be the things that are going to be the intercompany transactions between the payments for the credit card and the checking account. So when we charge these off, it will be decreasing uh, the, the credit card amount here and then decreasing the checking account to accounts that have bank feeds involved in them. So we'll talk more about how we can do that in the following presentation.